So what is the best workout program or routine? Now you're going to see in magazines and you're going to see on YouTube and you're going to see on Instagram, a lot of phonies touting their routine as being the best. But the truth is it is only the best for them. If you take one workout routine, and you have a hundred individuals do the same exact routine, you are going to see a tremendous amount of variation between the results. One, mainly due to genetic predispositions which influence how well you respond to exercise. And two, because of individual variation in an ability to adapt and recover from the training. A particular Instagram influencer's workout might be too much for a huge amount of the individuals participating in it. In many cases, it's never too little. What we need to worry about is overtraining. You also need to keep in mind as well that these Instagram influencers, bodybuilders, um, whoever, most of the time are on large amounts of anabolic androgenic pharmaceutical drugs, which allow them to handle the stress of these ridiculously long, complicated, stupid, illogical workouts. So what is the best training routine. It is one that effectively fatigues, works, and stimulates all of the major muscle groups in your body with a volume and frequency that you particularly can adapt to and recover from. The best starting routine is going to be one that involves simple, uncomplicated, joint-friendly movements that do not involve a lot of practice or skill in which target all of the major muscle groups in the body. This is going to be the anterior pushing muscles, the posterior horizontal pulling muscles, the muscles involved in a vertical overhead push, muscles involved in vertical pulling and the hips and thighs. That is a good basis, but that does not mean that using just these five simple movements to start is going to be optimal. You want to start with these five basic movements, which address all the major muscle groups. And then you want to add other movements, to increase relative involvement of other muscle groups, such as on top of those five movements, you're going to want direct work for the hamstrings, such as a stiff legged deadlift or a knee flexion hamstring curl exercise. You're likely also going to want an exercise that provides direct work for the knee flexors or the quads, which is going to be a knee extension exercise. Continuing on with the uh, lower body, you're absolutely going to want an exercise that addresses the calves, any kind of heel raise. So now we're left with eight exercises, eight exercises. We've got four for the lower body, four for the upper body. Although there are a couple of exercises you're definitely going to want to include in your upper body such as direct work for the trunk muscles, including an abdominal or torso flexion exercise, also a lower back extension exercise, in many cases, especially if you have lower back pain. Many people also will see additional benefit, many, not all, not most, but many, will see additional benefit from an elbow flexion, exercise in addition to their upper body training, 
and an elbow extension. Whichever kind of triceps extension, elbow extension exercise you use is pretty much up to you. Whatever kind of biceps curl or elbow flexion exercise you use is also completely up to you. So with those 10 exercises, let's see, we've got horizontal push, that's one, horizontal pull, that's two, vertical push, that's three, vertical pull, that's four, leg press, that's five, hamstrings, six, quads, seven, calves, eight, abdominals, nine, lower back, 10, biceps, 11, triceps, 12. That is a great starting beginner arrangement of exercises. But there's also plenty of exercises you can substitute, such as for a chest press, you could substitute a chest fly. For a pull down, you can substitute a pull over. For an overhead press, you can substitute a lateral shoulder raise. There are plenty of variations of row. There are plenty of variations of abdominal exercises. For a leg press, you could substitute a squat. You could substitute a lunge, a split squat, a deadlift. So you start with the basics, those 12 exercises, and then you make adjustments based on your individual ability to recover and adapt and preference. For instance, no matter what you choose, whether it's a pull down, a chin up, a pull over, direct work for the latissimus muscle group, the results at the end of the day are gonna be relatively the same. That's why a lot of people are looking for what is the best exercise for the lats, the best exercise for the chest. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. It's not gonna make any noticeable difference which exercise you choose that addresses the muscle group. So it comes down to preference. The volume and frequency of this training. It must be a volume and frequency that you can recover from and adapt to. Some people can do all 12 of these exercises in one workout three times a week, see results, and feel recovered. Some people may only be able to do it once a week. It is up to you to track your progress, track how you feel, track your fatigue level, and determine what is an adequate, appropriate volume and frequency for you. Some people may develop such a deep level of fatigue per exercise that they cannot tolerate all 12 of these basic exercises in one workout, in which case a split routine is going to be useful. Such as myself, when I do these four lower body exercises, I am absolutely dead for the rest of the day, in which case it would be counterproductive to add the upper body on top of it. You don't use a split routine in order to train muscles more. You use a split routine in order to avoid overtraining. So that is where the volume of frequency comes in. When it comes to frequency, again, more training is not necessarily better. Say a particular individual could handle three full body workouts a week recover and adapt and see results. If they cut it back to two, it would not prevent their results. It would slow them down by probably one to 3%. So the addition of this third workout per week may accelerate you reaching your genetic potential about one to 3% faster and that's it so you need to determine whether or not it is worth the trip to the gym the expenses in I guess gas or just worth the investment financially time investment to making that third workout a week 
for a one to three percent additional benefit. That's what research shows when training to failure, that's about the additional benefit you get. So what is the best workout? It is the workout that works for you and your individual ability to adapt and recover and one that addresses all the major muscle groups. There is no workout that has the best exercises, the best time under load, the best volume, the best frequency that works for everybody across the board. Just like there is not a particular medicine where one dose works the best for everybody across the board, the dose has to be adjusted based on sensitivities and your response. The exact same thing holds true for exercise. So I recommend you start with these basic 12 exercises and then adjust your volume and frequency according to your individual ability to adapt and respond, to recover and adapt. And then if you'd like, substitute other exercises in as long as they are addressing the major muscle groups. If you would like me to write you an individual program specifically for you, and help you determine the volume and frequency that works for you, join my Patreon membership. The link will be in the description below and the link will also be in this video and send me a private message. If you would like personal weekly coaching and really get into the detail of this and dial it in so you have the absolute best approach possible, Email me for individual coaching. Any questions, comments, put them in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe and also follow me on Instagram, J underscore underscore Vincent for no BS science-based approaches to exercise.